uh, today I have uh, another amazing guest, uh, Ivo, CEO of uh, Academy Remote How. And I just wanted to say, oh, and now I'm minimizing something. I wanted to say a little bit about Remote Academy, at least introduce. Remote How Academy is an online platform empowering the growth of remote work through education, community support, and work and travel projects. Uh, welcome. Maybe you can add something to that if you want. <laughs> yeah, I mean, first of all, I'm uh, extremely uh, delighted uh, for, for the invitation and I uh, will be um, more than happy to, uh, to be a part of, um, of, uh, of your series of, of interviews uh, with people that are um, in the remote workspace, that are uh, promoting um, this, uh, this huge change going on um, in the world right now. So uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, having me here. Thank you very much for joining me. I never say I'm Carolina and this is my guest in People That Interviews. In, rem uh, in remote home. In K KW World Me, <laughs> I almost jumped, <laughs> jumped on board. Um, I'm very, very pleased because I've been talking with people that have been working and finding their path, but also I want to talk to professionals, especially you that you created your uh, remote work summit last year. But first question, uh, my first, first question is your journey to first, your journey to remote working. Uh, how it came in your life that you started to be interested in it and second thing is how you became a remote academy ultimately if you can say a few words about it sure um so it all started actually um in the us uh when uh, ola and my wife and i lived in, in and worked in austin and in texas which is by the way one of the best places to live in the world right now um it was uh, 2017 um, and we were really observing this whole uh, culture shift going on among the young generation um, in the US, uh, like first hand experience. Um, and then on the other side, um, I was a manager and, and in the company they worked for. Um, and I had the challenges to uh, hire top talents, but also to keep people uh, within the team because of this culture shift um, of experience over possession. People prefer to go to Thailand rather than buy a new car, but also the growing need of uh, flexibility um, to decide where and, and how and where, where, where you work. Um, so as we had a bunch of millennials um, at the, the company I work for, is a German company, Shopkeep, we had 100% um, US staff there, um, I, was, I was really, getting this feeling like, okay, something is going on. Remote work is, is becoming a huge thing. Um, and at the same time, businesses are, are really suffering from lack of talent. It, it's really hard um, to, to find good people on, on the job market right now. Um, so I was starting to connect the dots that, hey, maybe we can make um, people happier by, by meeting their needs. Uh, when it comes to the flexibility and, and deciding where you are, how you live, and, and etc. Um, and then on the other side, help businesses to uh, to tap into the global pool of talents and not be limited only to the location where you are based, but basically be able to uh, hire people from all over the world. Um, yeah, so that was that was the initial thought, and it all started um, like end of 2000. Um, 17, yeah, it's 2019 right now. Um, and then um, beginning of um, 2018, we decided, okay, we need to jump on board full time um, after having like over 40 um, meetings and video calls with some C-levels, HR executives um, to validate if, if this is the way that we should go. Um, we first started to um, work on a product that was like a kind of workation thing for corporates when they are sending their top employees to one location. They are working remotely there with some workshops, etc. And it was a cool thing for the talent attraction and talent retention point, uh, but companies were totally not ready for remote work. So that was one of our biggest objections that we were getting that, yeah, cool, your, your product might be, uh, might be interesting to attract millennials, um, but we, we won't allow 
them to work remotely because it's it's too risky we are afraid we don't know how um so then we decided like okay we need to first educate the market and uh, as you mentioned we organized the remote future summit um that happened in 2018 in june um and that was a really a game changer uh, we've managed to get over 5,000 people um to join this virtual conference from 105 countries we had amazing speakers from like Asana, Hayes, New York Times, Forbes, etc. Um, and then basically it was uh, it was um, cornerstone for for educating the the market on how the remote work should be done from a visual um, side, but also from from the management and from from the HR side because we all need to remember that these three um, uh, these three um, areas should work together. So I as individual need to know how to work remotely, how to be efficient, um, productive, how to know how to communicate, how to stay uh, motivated, happy, etc. Then on the other hand, my manager needs to know how to manage me, uh, how to manage the distributed team, and uh, how to build engagement um, and um, make make sure that everything works uh, like a charm. And then on the third side, there are, there are HR people that are responsible for hiring, for onboarding, for creating the culture, for all the legal tax aspects that are, that are really different in the remote environment. Um, so that was a foundation for, uh, for Remote Health Academy. So answering your, your second question, um, it really started from the feedback that we got from the community. So after the summit, we, we asked people like, guys, what do you think? Did you like the summit? Did you like the content? What do you think we should do next? And, and the response was amazing. And, and the main theme was that um, people loved um, the fact that we brought together top subject matter experts, that were, they were sharing best practices, real life examples. So you were not figuring stuff on your own, making mistakes and, and struggling, but you were actually getting an access to, um, to companies and, and to people that already done this and know how it should be done. Um, so the feedback was that we are lacking certain global standards. Um, so we decided, okay, uh, we, will, uh, we will make it happen. And, and that's why we, uh, we kicked off the project called Remote How Academy, uh, which is the first global um, online education um, platform. Um, there is helping both individuals and companies um, to, to go remote um, and yeah this is uh, this is how it uh, how it all started um, yeah cool thank you it was my second question like for who is the academy but you actually also uh, covered yeah. it that you can get I can, yeah, yeah I, can, I can actually um, talk a bit more about that because um, the academy is both for uh, I would say B2C and also B2B um, so for B2C, for anyone that would like to um, become a remote worker or they are already maybe working remotely, but no one ever showed them uh, any best practices around it, um, either if it's part-time remote or if they are full-time remote, this is a place for them uh, where they can learn it. Uh, but then on the other side, we are talking with uh, huge corporations actually, but also with, with startups um, to incorporate our academy in their uh, learning and development programs uh, or onboarding procedures. Um, so whenever the remote work is happening and it's happening more and more often, for example, a random home office uh, from, from time to time, this is already remote work. You're remote to, um, to your team, to your manager, to, to, your, to your colleagues. Um, so, so this is like a, like a second group um, uh, that, that we are addressing uh, Academy to. Yes, it's uh, <clears throat> it's uh, really needed uh, because uh, this transition, like you mentioned, it's happening, but people don't really know, you know, one hand, individuals want to change their lives, uh, and on the other hand, companies are starting to make that process, and uh, this is all new approach to many, many things that are, um, yeah, that are just pretty much, it's happening for a long time, but it's actually still pretty, pretty fresh. Uh, if it's about setting it up, like companies are really lost. And also, I'm also talking a little bit about finding, you know, actually your passion in it, not changing only work to remote and uh, um, be still like behind laptop and do whatever. And you're not happy with, with what you do. So for me, it's like the fusion of both more freedom, but also um, 
living more passionate, working more passionate as well, and using your skills because these technologies and all the things you're teaching as well, the tools, the skills you can gain online and etc. Like uh, you can use to direct yourself more more towards you know your talents and what you really dig. And I think that's the most powerful. Um, yeah, I, I I completely agree. And uh, um, getting back to uh, to what you just said, as we have a mo- job market where employees are dictating terms right now uh, if someone is like okay i would like to have a new passion or my passion is this and that and this is my number one priority um and then the job is this after um then the, the employer is like in a completely different environment they are not dictating terms anymore they need to adjust and the uh, fun thing is that what glassdoor found out is that um, 76%, if I remember correctly, um, employees uh, prefer new perks over the salary increase. So this is also a very interesting shift where money is not the number one driver anymore, right? Um, And then um, coming back to what you said about companies and the fact that remote work isn't something new, absolutely. I mean, it was introduced in 1970s by NASA, it uh, was called telecommuting. Um, so so it's, it's with us since pretty long time. But actually, um, in the last, I, I would even say like year, year and a half when, um, when there were starting to be more and more articles online and because of the market where employees are dictating terms um, and, and there is this whole culture shift, it's, it's becoming more and more um, uh, popular. And you have companies like Envision, GitLab, Buffer, GitHub, that that are either 100% remote or they are mainly remote. Um, so so that that's really like a social proof um, mm-hmm. that the business can be done remotely and also successfully, right? For example, like the story of Automatic, they had an office in the first uh, line in the pier in San Francisco and they introduced remote work policy and no one was coming to the office anymore and they needed to shut it down and they they are worth over a billion dollars. So, so um, if someone is telling you that remote work won't work, um, yeah, it's um, you, you need to remember a couple of uh, arguments yeah. uh, to find. That's true. There are so many successful companies that uh, even started remotely and they're 100% from the beginning on. And yeah. it's really weird because one hand, when, I, when I'm diving into it and I've seen it for a couple of years when I had first longer travel and I've seen already people then making their lives you know, somewhere in Asia or so, uh, I was really shocked how big it is. And especially this last year, like you mentioned, um, year or year and a half, two years, I'm really shocked how massive it is. And then at the same time, I'm going somewhere um in different places and i talk to people and they're like completely mesmerized is this possible even like oh it's really happening and i was like yeah it is happening massively happening um you have mentioned that remote work is still in the underground and it was after your you did the, the nomad city in Gran canaria you did amsterdam unleashed and you were in the web summit in lisbon as well so overall from that is this your yes. conclusion is it still in the underground um, y- yes and no. So it's like an unofficial underground. So um, it's it's basically happening more and more often. Uh, but like but we just fun- mentioned. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. So it's like it's happening. But then when you're, for example, talking with either HR people, uh, C levels, and when you are asking like, um, is remote work happening within your organization? Um, and they are like, mm, no. And then you're asking the follow-up question like, but I'm assuming that people work from homes from time to time or from a coffee shop and such. And like, oh, yeah, 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 of course. And then you are asking like a follow-up question like, okay, so it's, it's happening. Um, do you have certain procedures in place? Are you preparing these people? Like, is everything set up for this new way of work? And they're like, oh, no. But when you ask me this question, I'm assuming that, oh no, shit, yeah, we need to do something. And so you're basically like opening um, their minds. So it's like still underground that is happening and that is becoming, becoming mainstream. Uh, but we are really at the very early stage of um, making sure from, from company side that this is introduced right. Uh, because you can also introduce remote work and, and, and fail. 
um, if, if you are not doing this right, um, you can end up with having people um, that are either not productive or they, um, they don't feel good, they are, um, they are lonely. I mean, there are so many things you can, you can do wrong. Um, so, so the key thing is that it's beneficial for the business. Like in various studies, you can see that people are happier, people are more productive, organizations are more efficient and so on and so on. But you need to you need to do it right. Yeah. And so yeah, it's one hand it's like we've mentioned it's so big because we all, you also stated that by 2020 it's going to be 50% of re remote uh, workforce. Um, but at the same time, when you went to those all summits and uh, uh, meetings, uh, it it seems like uh, like we mentioned as well the companies are quite lost. But Overall, do you think, this is a little bit of a question from another angle. First of all, is there, if you can still tell me, is there something else you, you like took out from this last years, uh, showing up in the summits and, uh, um, and in Lisbon and Amsterdam and Gran Canaria? Was there some other thought that came to your head that uh, you've learned? And the other hand, I also wanted to ask you from another angle is, do you think it is easy to find re remote work? Because one hand is so big, but the other hand, it's really hard to get out there, uh, you know, to, how to say, to make yourself visible to actually get that job. Because then when you have, we talked about it before, when you put the job posting on there's remote jobs, there's suddenly like hundreds of people applying on it or 200 or et cetera. It's like a massive number. So do you think it's actually easy to find a remote job? Yeah. Um, so answering the, the, the first question, um, I had a, quite a few interesting talks with uh, people from um, companies that are 100% um, remote uh, throughout the, the time that we are working um, on the project and, and at the different conferences, etc. And one of the themes is that um, every part of the remote ecosystem, let's call it this way, um, needs to work well together. What, what I'm saying, parts of the ecosystem, I mean the employee, manager, and HR. Because if some of these parts are not uh, working well with, uh, with, with each other, um, then you are setting um, up your, uh, yourself for, for, fa for failure. Um, so that's why the companies that start remote first um, as buffer for example um, f from the day one they were um, they were learning by doing but at least everyone was uh, was on the same page so right now if you have companies that are um, they already exist and they need to transition and um, they need to do it on on, on a several uh, layers coming back to the to the question um, with uh, with remote jobs um, it's a um, it's a growing market on the employer side. That's there. There is no doubt about that. Um, but still, um, majority of employers are hesitant because they don't know how to do it. There is no trust. So we are coming back to initial um, discussion um, why we are in the beginning because the, it's we, we are just we are just starting to to cross this. Um, these, these, these objections, right? Um, so there are more, more and more remote, uh, remote jobs um, out there. Uh, but then on the, on the candidate side, you need to somehow show that you're, you're capable of doing this work. Um, one thing is that you have your hard skills, but then on the other side, you need to prove that you're able to, um, to do this job in the, in the remote environment, right? Um, to, to show this trust um, and, and like a proof that, um, that you're the, the right person um, to do that. So any sort of um, social, social proof, so either you have um, experience or you went through certain um, education, etc., cetera, is, is really may, um, helping you with, uh, with going through, uh, through the process. Because you're, as, as you mentioned, there are like, um, quite a lot of candidates because you're competing with people from all over the world. Um, so, um, so we need to have some, um, some, some unique, um, unique points in the beginning when, when, the, pro, when the recruitment process is uh, starting. Yeah, but gladly, uh, like if you get into like your academy, but there's also a lot of groups and platforms and people around it. I think if you start to get into community, you also pick up and you learn. So this is also, 
yeah, yeah, probably the soft skills and also the knowledge of, of how to move around in that environment. Exactly. So, okay i think that's it i think i have to let you go now <laughs> so thank you so much for the conversation um really really so glad with better. your expertise and uh, your insight into remote work and um i don't think i have to even wish you good luck with remote um how academy because yeah it's really what we need as well so um it's super cool that you're there guys thank, thank you so you. much it was a pleasure and uh, i wish you uh, all the best thank you <laughs>